Who your girlfriend fave? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Boss talk. Yeah, we came from. Check it, check it, check it, man. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. My dad walk on. Hey, man. Hey, we got a very lovely, special guest in here today, man. Yeah. She really don't need no introduction. We just pulled up in uh, Los Angeles. Yes, sir. We in LA California. West Coast. Mm -hmm. Man, check it, man. My girl Crown is in the building. Hey. Crown with a K. Crown with a K. Crown with a K, man. That's what's right. going on? What's going on? How y'all feeling? Man, hey. I feel real good. I got my shades on. This is the first episode I done put yeah, my shades fly. on. These niggas don't even really really know I really flex you, hard you really fly thank you you really these fly. ain't number little Tom Ford little, little, little splash little casual, yeah nothing regular. real nothing major <laughs> you know what I'm saying but anyway man so how you doing I'm amazing I'm amazing Can't man complain. So, so what bring you out today? I, we came out here. We kind of pulled up. We're yeah. trying to figure out what's going on. Absolutely. We don't know. I, it's like a pop-up. What's going it's on here? It's a pop-up shop. It's a, it's a pre-Super Bowl party. It's a pop-up shop. All type of stuff going on. Um, there's different brands that are highlighting their brand. Black-owned businesses. Mm -hmm. Black-owned businesses. Dope. Um, and they're highlighting their brands. Do you have a lot brands. of black-owned businesses here in L.A.? There are a lot. A lot of them are unknown, though. A lot okay. of people don't know about them, you know what I mean? And a lot of them are separate. So to bring them all together, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. in one in one building, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. Um, and so there's clothes. They, they, Y'all got to go check it out. There's clothing line. They got some tequila out there. They got some, some sunglasses, all type of stuff. Um, just Man. a variety of, of stuff. Man. Dope. So, so um, let's, let's talk about you for a minute, Crown. So you, you, how old were you when you started off uh, modeling? Okay, when I started okay, when I started officially modeling, it was about two years ago. Um, I have always been acting. I'm from here, Los Angeles, so you know, I've been acting since I was little. Um, and you know, with acting comes you gotta take headshots and you gotta do all these photo shoots. So mm -hmm. I've always been in front of the camera. Um, but it wasn't until about two years ago that I was like, Let me let me let me really dabble into modeling, like let me really take it serious. No, I get um, it. And yeah, because you gotta have that confidence. That confidence. If you don't have that what are you doing it for? You so, know? Did, did, is it still a, a, a thing where the models have to be a, so you know petite and all that other stuff, mm -hmm. and they criticize them if they don't be the right size, and y'all going in there throwing up and I all that other stuff? I don't think it's not. I don't think it's as oh, bad. I'm going it's all not. the way. So, I'm going all personally, the way. I don't do runway modeling, um, and a lot of times that's where you get that, like the the next top model sort of look. Um, I'm five two. You feel me? So I'm down here. I'm little. I'm petite, um, and I keep it small. But I do a lot of print. I do a lot of you know what I mean. Uh, video modeling and, and stuff where I don't really have to. They, right. they ain't trying to check on me like that too bad. Yeah. Um, but you know what I mean. You have to be confident in your own self. Like, like this me. I'm I'm not losing weight for y'all. I'm not gaining weight for y'all. This me. So if you want it, cool. If you don't, cool. You know what I mean. But at the same time, you say you're not losing or gaining weight. But then you're also an actress and. <coughs> Being an actress yeah. depends on the role. You yeah. have to lose the weight or yeah. gain the weight depends on the role. Right. So right. So for acting, I'll do it. <laughs> for modeling, not nah. so much. But um, definitely for acting, yeah. Depending on what role I'm, you know, I'm doing at the time, I'll, you know. And as a young adapt. child growing up, mm -hmm. um, was there a point in your life that you ever felt um, not confident, not like what? Up until college, yes. And I, I got I graduated college in May. So up until college, I, I felt not confident, all that. Um, and, you know, it was a lot of stuff that contributed to feeling like that. But Give me um, an example of one, one of those, thing. Well, so, okay. I keep a big Tell one. me. So check this out. So I went to a predominantly white high school. Uh -huh. right? And when I say predominantly white, I mean I was the only African-American in my class. I mean, I was the first African-American to graduate from my high school. Like That's dope. Very, very small. Mm -hmm. Um, so while that comes with like that's very dope but at the same time you know what I mean that comes with a lot of challenges because you are the only one mm -hmm. um, and so feeling like that you know it's not an empowering thing when you're a kid it's more like oh like every, nobody looks like me nobody really seems to care about how I look or about you know my feelings or my the things that I value but as a child growing up and seeing all of that did you try to fit in like mm -hmm. you had to always wear a perm get a long hair to try to fit into yep um, I, always, I wanted my hair straight, mm -hmm. as a lot of black women did, you know, growing up. Um, but to the point where I used to straight, when my mom started letting me do my own hair, I'm like, I'm just, just keep straightening, just keep straightening. Um, and, you know, I thought that was the look, like, because this whole European, Eurocentric look is, you know, the, well, now it's not, but the universally accepted look and the universal, that's beauty, universally, right? Mm -hmm. So growing up, that's all I saw and that's all I wanted to be like. 
was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, I guess I should have straighter hair, and I wish I was lighter, but I'm not, so I'm going to just be dark with straight hair. You feel me? Like, Did you it, get bullied at school? Did I didn't anybody? get bullied. I didn't get bullied for my for my. I got bullied because I was short and because I was young. I didn't get bullied for my uh, skin color. For your color skin color. Oh, that's that's a blessing. It is a blessing, yeah. Um, but I wasn't, you know, empowered by it either. You know. But what how I mean? did you overcome that low self-esteem? Um, yeah. How did you? Listen. Okay, so um, when I was in school, I had to do a lot of sort of, Mm, I want to say racial advocacy sort of things because I was the only one so I had to I was personally going out and doing a lot of um, recruitment for you know bringing more black kids into school stuff like that right did the school ask you to do that no I begged them to do that because I was like as a black student I feel very uncomfortable here I don't feel heard I don't feel seen because you know I'm one of however many how were you chosen to be in that school how did you get the opportunity to be that one so when I was, um, I don't even know how I was at this, I was young. I was a competitive gymnast um, for years. And there was a person at my gym and her, one, like one of my teammates, and her mom um, used to put her in these little summer camps, right? And the school that I, that I ended up going to was like the host of these summer camps. Um, and so her mom like told my mom about this summer camp that they were doing and they were mm-hmm. saying, oh, we're gonna open a school soon. We're just gonna have these little summer camps until we open the school up. Um, and so, you know, they had this camp that my parents put me in, um, you know, and I was able to just, you know, learn about just different things, just mm-hmm. random things. I did like a robotics camp and then just like just random stuff. Um, and they thought you'd be perfect. And they were like, black kid, we need her. Mm-hmm. And for me, you know, they were like the way that my family was trying to push push it for to, to me was like, oh, like. This is a great opportunity, you know, for you to kind of pioneer some 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 things. Right. You know what I mean? Um, to be the first of something. That's a lot of and, pressure. And it's a lot of pressure. Um, it's also very exciting. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Especially as a kid, I didn't fully understand what that meant going into it. I just knew, okay, so I'm gonna be the first to to graduate from the school ever. That's hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know, that was that's what kept me pushing. Um, but have you ever looked back on the school now and see how many black kids are there now because of you? Yeah, I actually, I actually went. Uh, what was that? When I first came back out here, like August, uh, August, and there's a there's a good amount, but honestly, it's 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 still lack of diversity, very mm-hmm. much so. Um, and so, you know, that was interesting to see when I came back. But I didn't gain that confidence until college. When I was around, I went to Spelman College. When I was around other black women who, you know, empowered me as a black woman, you know, and just to see black women in their prime, to see black women empowering each other, empowering themselves, it was beautiful for me. And it was That's what I, it was everything that I needed, you know what I mean, to re to to get reassure myself. Um reinvent you know, yourself. Literally reinvent myself, you know, and, and bring myself to reality like you a dope nigga. Like mm-hmm, for real. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but because when you're in these environments where where there's nothing but white people, like, you're not gonna get that. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna get that. Mm-hmm. They want they want to use you for everything. My picture was on every wall, every wall in the school, every single one. But when it came down to me as a person, how y'all kicked, like how I felt or anything. But like you gotta that, think about mm-hmm. this though. Um, if they had turned to you to try to empower you, mm-hmm. would you believe? Exactly. That's you wouldn't believe thing. them because they don't look them. like you. Exactly. So either way, <laughs> you're not gonna be empowered in you know in these environments. You have to. It's it comes from yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you know that I just worked through that um, internally a lot. A lot of prayer. I'm a, I'm a spiritual person, mm-hmm. so a lot of prayer, a lot of just like you know understanding who I am and you know who God made me to be. And you know once you get to that point and really fully understanding that, then here we are. Well, <laughs> you awesome. know the thing you gotta realize is that most of the time, uh, you know, it's a setup. God is setting you up. Absolutely. You know, so at the end of the day, there is a reason Text. why mm-hmm. you went through what you went through. Oh, absolutely. But the, the, to be a, a, a young black entrepreneur, yeah. female, yeah. and then to be the, went through all the things that you had to face, is, is, is something that pretty much don't kill you, make you stronger. Absolutely. So you're creating a way for others that's going to come behind you. Right. So that's the dope part about it. That's but definitely. But yeah. at the end of the day, I know already it wasn't easy. No, it's not. No, it wasn't easy. But at the end of the day, if it was easy, everybody would have been doing it. Exactly. It's so cool. you paved yeah. the way. Right. And and at this and that same in that same note, you know what I mean? It was such a challenge. Um, I wouldn't be who I am, you know, if I didn't go through all that stuff with them with the extra kids and kids, you know, calling me nigga and all type of just weird. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought you said you didn't. Wait a minute. I, oh yeah. I, I thought you said you didn't face no, no. No bullying. I mean, nobody would. Nobody was bullying me. But as far as like kids, like thinking it was okay because. Well, well who they, called you a nigga first? 
What what, you mean, but were they, were they trying to call you that because of the music and they just trying to call you so, like you a so, homegirl? Oh, you like my nigga? Like yeah. my nigga? How yeah. did they say like, What's up, my nigga? That's how they would do it. Yeah. I literally, I wish I, y'all, I wish I recorded these moments. Because when I was a kid, you know, as a kid, it's like, it's like, it don't seem like that's something you should be, you should be on. But you know, like, I don't know. Like, it just doesn't feel right. But it also, I don't really know how to reprimand people. You know what so I mean? So when you so, went home, did you tell your parents? I think I talked to them about it here and there, but at the same time, like, I used to be a very shy person. I used to lot of, let a lot of stuff slide. I used okay. to lot, let people, you know what I mean, talk to me any kind of way, walk all over me, you know what I mean? Not purposely, just because I didn't know better. Um, and so, that because of that, I think a lot of stuff slid by me that I can't even remember at this point, but you know what I mean? Like, stuff like that mm-hmm. was like, mm, Okay. You what, know. What do you no, think? Do you think it's because it stir, stirs from your parents or the boy that you was brought up that you wasn't able to understand what you was facing? Um, my parents, honestly, my parents did an amazing job of of, of raising me to understand the world in its entirety. Uh, my father's a pastor, so you know I, I saw a lot, learned a lot growing up. I just think seeing it firsthand was so shocking, and like hearing it in real life was so shocking that it was just like. I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to, you know what I mean? I don't even know how to combat this. Um, other than be like, don't say that. I don't know. I'm a kid, you know that, what I mean? That, that's, that's, that's funny that you say that because mm-hmm. if, sometimes we don't understand, but even being a pastor and all the other stuff, par- mm-hmm. parenting isn't easy. Yeah. People are trying, it's trial and error when you're dealing with parenting. Right. So a lot of times because of the being in these different positions and titles, you end up neglecting a lot of the responsibilities of being intimate with conversation with the person that you love. Right. So at the end of the day, there are those things, those elephants in the room that are there that a lot of times people don't really get to talk about and really they still don't be recovered from it. Right. Because a lot of times when you go through things, Mm -hmm. uh, you don't really understand what you're going through, but you, but you know, you learn it from somewhere. Absolutely. So that neglect or Mm -hmm. that sense of, uh, he's here and he, I have to act a certain way mm. sometimes filters over into some dysfunctionalities. Mm-hmm. I'm being real. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you, you, you can't really just gauge it on the fact of, well, this was this. Like, I was this. I've been here. I've been doing this and that. And I've been a parent of whatever. Yeah, yeah. But then it's still a, a, it's something in these situations. Right, absolutely. And I think a lot of times because we love our parents, we try to hide some of them mm. because we don't want to we don't want to say they this or that because oh, they yeah, are parents. Nah, I mean, you know I, what I mean? I'll keep it real. Like, no, like if, I mean, obviously my parents wasn't clicking on every cylinder, you know what I mean? But yeah. I, absolutely. Like personally, there wasn't anything that I couldn't talk to my parents about. There wasn't anything that we, I couldn't address. There wasn't anything that they wouldn't address with me. Ever. And you were raised in a house with both parents. I was. And any siblings? I have one brother. So yeah. younger, or older. He's older. So, so he didn't go through any of this, like. No, he went to he went through a completely different um, experience when it came to high school and schools and stuff like okay. that. Um, he he went to a very diverse school and he yeah. So we had two completely different experiences. So when he when you was called a nigger, or a nigger, <laughs> yeah. or, or, or any of this, when you talk you, you and you didn't you say you didn't feel offended by it or you was cool with it? Yeah. Or did it you was, talk to your parents about it that day? Honestly, I couldn't tell you that. I don't you, know. you see what I'm saying? I doubt it. I doubt it. I think, um, I'm sure I would like, yeah, I honestly, I, I literally cannot think back to that moment because it was so, it's such a suppressed, far, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where it was like, like I remember these, these little white boys who thought they was cool. Y'all know them little jock white boys who just think they hot shit. They mm-hmm. just think they Yeah, they be singing that old yeah. Justin Timberlake yeah, white it boy. Was, it was, it yeah, was yeah, old, old, old Justin Timberlake, yeah. old, old, old Yellow Wolf white boy. Yeah, I know what you're talking was, about. it was them old, type old, of little old, boys. Old, uh, what's that boy? Travis Barker white boy. Yeah, you know, I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. I, yeah. I got him. Yeah. I, I know what yeah. you're talking about. So, you know, you know. So a lot of that came, for, and for me, you know, hearing them people like that say it was like, what the fuck, you for sure can't say that. But it was also, remember, I was very shy. I was very, like, to reserved. myself, mm-hmm. very reserved. So if I heard something like that, it's just going to be like, noted. What the fuck, he weird. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to confront you about it back then. <laughs> now, don't do it. You know what I mean? But, so yeah, so it was just one of those things where it was just like, okay, like, Huh, like, this feel really weird. This feel awkward. I honestly cannot remember if I went home. I highly doubt that I went home. It was like, a kid said nigga today. 
I don't I don't see myself doing that. What? I don't see well, that's my, because, you know see, what I mean? See, they, 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 the nigga word come out because they listen to this rap music. Yeah, because they say it at home. They no, no, they you listen know, to the like, rap music. The rapper, they think they rappers. They think they, they, think they, they cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I get uh-huh. it. That, but, but it is something that we have to try to yeah. stop in this path when yeah. it comes down to something of, of that nature because yeah. they'll take it there. They will. They'll turn and, and use it in a, a way that they seem to think it's cool. Absolutely. But then when they get mad at you, they they gonna turn it up a notch. And if you don't and if you don't say nothing about it, they are gonna keep it going. They are gonna keep it going. They're, yeah. You know. So how did you deal with it after you one would do that? Did you just hang so, with them and they just no, kept going? No, I ended up I I around I want to say around maybe so I was there. The school is like it goes from sixth to twelfth grade. So I was there. The school started when I was in the eighth grade, and we were at the top of each. You know what I mean? Each year they added a grade or whatever. Um, so I want to say around like maybe tenth, ninth, tenth grade is where you know I started to have this transition into like I am a powerful black woman rather than like I'm just a black kid in the class. Um, and so I think this the, the this was the moment where I was you know starting to. Um, I like started these clubs. I started this this um, group called Bridging the Gap, which essentially I wanted a platform for me, people who looked like me, um, specifically black students, to just have somewhere where they could go. And you know, this was around the time when there was a lot going on um, mm-hmm. in regards to um, Trayvon Martin and just all these all these police brutality situations going on, and it was just going crazy. And they were saying nothing at my school. Nothing, mm. nothing. We had these little um, comp, they, these little, I mean, like group gatherings called Commons every Thursday. And I remember they used to talk about everything under the sun, uh, 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 the environment, just random shit, you know. And I would just be like, why aren't we talking about what's important here? Like, it's important to my life. And so I just started um, implementing just a bunch of like clubs and you know just different things that that just paid attention to what mm-hmm. I was lacking mm-hmm. personally. So. Man, hey man, you you a dope uh, individual. Uh, so you say you graduated from Spelman? I did. That's what I'm talking what about. What was your major? I did TV and film theater. Awesome. TV and film theater, and you've been on a few films, correct? Yeah, I've been in a few films. I do a lot of like independent, smaller work. Um, yeah. So. What are you doing to try to get yourself out there to get into the bigger film? So I, currently, I actually teach at a studio um, in Crenshaw. It's uh, I teach acting to kids. Um, and that kind of you know allows me to network with not only younger people and, and teach myself as a, as an actor. Um, being able to teach teaches me, you know what I mean. Right. So that always helps me better myself as an actor, uh, as an actress. Um, but I'm just always networking. I'm always meeting new people. You know what I mean. I'm, I'm not shy no more. So I just be talking. <laughs> you know what I mean. You never know what connections you know are, can be made or whatever. Um, and so I just. I, I let me, let me ask you this: Top three actresses of all time, or act, actors or actresses, either one. Dead Top or three, alive. dead or alive. Huh? huh. Okay. Um, no, I'm just kidding. My top, my top three. Um, sheesh. Okay. My my personal top three. I'm gonna go um, Viola Davis. Um, Viola Davis. I love I'm her. I'm gonna go Denzel. Okay. And I'm gonna go. Mm. One of my favorite actresses. I don't, okay, I'm gonna put her in my top personal top three because she influences me a lot as an actress, and that's Gabby Union, Gabriella Union. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's more like a like a current person that I look up to as far as you know what I right. mean. Her career, just her life path, everything that she does I, and represents. You know, I I respect everything about her. So. I think That's she, cool. she she done got a little laid actress. back though because she married and got oh, yeah. they yeah. got that bread now. But she was oh, yeah, more hungry to... back when she did uh sure. what, Mean Girls Eve. or whatever yeah. Eve or Deliver mm-hmm. yeah, well, yeah, yeah, she was more hungry back then. But now yeah. you might she not see her because nah. they they chilling right now. Like, she don't got to do everything she had to not, do back not, then. You not know, the other girl hungry. What's the girl name that, that had that had the ball here just uh, oh, broke up t- with Tiffany? Tiffany Tiffany Haddish. Now she hungry right now. You got to know who hungry. I can tell the hungry ones. Uh, she she, she hungry. She in everything right Who else now? hungry right. right now? Who else you think hungry? Uh, like I you, see. That, yeah. Who hungry? Is Taraji hungry still? Taraji. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Taraji. Uh, she kind of fat. She you know she so might be she all making right a little money now. You know now, what I mean? So, Taraji yeah. cool. Taraji yeah cool. yeah. I wonder if them hungry ones is who you want to see. Absolutely. What about my girl? She go hard. The girl with the lips. What's the one be the, on them? The girl uh, with the lips. What with Jamie Foxx? What's that girl name? The one was on uh, Django. The girl oh, with the Carrie lips. Washington. Yeah, that's the girl with the lips right there. <laughs> uh, 
uh, it was another, it was um, one of the actresses that really also influences me right now, I would say, is Issa Rae. Um, and, yeah, and just yeah. the way, you know, I, I respect and I, and I, you know, have a plan to sort of follow the way that she created everything from scratch, from Bob. Dope. You know what I mean? I'm Dope. not, you know, I'm not following nobody. I'm not signed under nobody. I'm doing what I want to do. You know, I'm creating however I want to create, putting out whatever I want to put out. And I respect that a lot because, you know, it's hard to do that as a black woman and um, and to do that and thrive at it and look good while doing it. Yeah, that's dope. So to tell us how we can get a hold of you. Like if people wanted to uh, book you or try to try mm -hmm. to get you to come through, do some promo or get you in a film, how would they get a hold of you? Sure. So uh, my Instagram is at Crown B, K-R-O-W-N-B. Um, so my stage name is Crown. Uh, so that's actually all my social media platforms, Crown B. And on my Instagram, there is my website, so you can see some of my portfolio. Um, I have some things that I've acted in on my Instagram as well. Instagram is like my hub of everything. So hey, check me out. Hey man, thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk One Hundred One. Absolutely, thank you for talk. having me, bosses. We some yeah, bosses. yeah, yeah. We bossed up. <laughs> check it, man. Hey man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred One. Yes. And we out.